You know, it seems like we're hearing so much about end times and uh, what's going to happen, what's upcoming for believers and for non-believers. And this morning I just wanted to do something I've never done before, and that's simply let Scripture speak for itself. Normally, uh, you have an outline, and you can follow an outline. Well, this morning I wrote down the verses that I'm going to be reading, and you have them then that you can look at, all from the book of Revelation. What I'm, what my point this morning is basically for those who refuse to accept what Christ, God the Son, did for them there on the cross, and the God and the wrath of God is going to come on all those who refuse that work that He did there for us. And you know, it's so simple. All we'd have to do is just trust and believe that he died for me, he died for you, he died for our sins there on the cross, and we'll escape all this that we're going to be talking about this morning. So the following are just a few verses from Revelation that tell us what's going to happen to those who are left behind, who do not, are not taken up in the rapture. And it's going to be a horrible situation. Uh, most of it's going to happen in the last three and a half years of the tribulation. That's what we call that. The rapture has taken place, and now they go into the tribulation for seven and a half years. And the last three and a half years are going to be tough. And that's what I want to read about. And you and I will have friends, family possibly, that are going to be going through what we're going to be reading, and we need to be praying for those particularly. So I'm just going to read these verses that I have, and you have listed in your, they're from Revelation. Here's what's happening on this earth after the rapture takes place and the tribulation begins. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place, out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and, and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them was darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions on the earth gave power, have power. They are commanded not to harm the, the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not 
have the seal of God on their foreheads. And when I say men, mankind, that's men and women both. It includes everybody, not just men only. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. You know, it doesn't matter what happens. There's going to be terrible, and this is talking about people that are going to be left here on earth during that tribulation time. The believers are gone. Praise the Lord for that. But if, if you're not saved this morning, this is what you're going to face if you don't accept the work that God the Son did on the cross. And then some more verses. He performs great signs so that so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an, uh, to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no, no one may buy or sell except the, except the one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome so, loathsome uh, sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped the image, his image. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And the men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed God of heaven, the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and, the, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such, as a, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth and great hail from heaven fell upon men each hailstone about the weight of a talent and I looked that up and it's approximately 75 pounds hailstones 75 pounds falling from heaven men blasphemed God 
because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolater, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone, which is the second death. And I like in here that he says all liars, not the, not the, just the black liars or the gray, remember the, you know, oh, it's just a, a, a white lie or a gray lie. So he says all liars. He doesn't say that about all the rest, but he says it. I think that's interesting to me. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Doesn't sound like much fun to me. I don't know about you. But I'm not going to be here. And I trust that you won't be here either. But if you haven't accepted the work that Christ, the, God the Son, did for you on the cross, you will be here. As sad as that is. So, what does this say to us today? Unbelievable days are ahead for those who reject the work that God the Son did on the cross. We can't even begin to imagine what's going to happen. But it is. God said it was going to happen, and it will happen just like he says, just when he says. So the question this morning is, is your name written in the book of life? If it's not written in the book of life, you're going to be going through these things. How do you get your name written in the book of life? It's very, very, very simple. All you have to do is accept the work that God the Son did for you on the cross as your only means of salvation. There's no other means of salvation that's available that will save us from all these things that we've been reading about this morning. But accepting the work of God the Son on the cross will save us. And that's the only thing that does. Praise God for that. So that's how you get your name written in the book of life is simply by trusting what God the Son did for you there on the cross. If you haven't done that, you're headed for and, and those things that I read this morning are just a few of the things. There's many, many more things. If you read through the book of Revelation, you'll see that there's many more things that are there that men and mankind are going to go through. I don't want to go through it. I don't want you to go through it. But unless you've accepted the work again that Christ did on the cross, you will do it. He died for all mankind that we might have everlasting life with him in heaven. Each one of us has to choose. If you notice in your bulletin, I think it says, you choose. I think that's what it says. You decide. Huh? You, decide. you decide, okay? Same thing, basically. You get to decide. You get to decide whether you want to accept the work that God the Son, Jesus, did for us on the cross as your only hope of salvation to escape all this and so much more, you get to decide what you're going to do. You can you can decide for it, or you can decide against it. And you might say, well, I'm not going to decide either way. If you don't decide, then you're on the side that says, I, I'm, I'm rejecting what he's done for us. You have to accept the work that he did for us on the cross if you're going to spend eternity in heaven with him. Those that don't are going to be spending eternity in hell. Apart from without Christ, obviously he's not going to be there. But in outer darkness, and, and so much can be said about what hell is going to be like, and we don't even have an idea all of it, but there's some things that are mentioned there that give us an inkling of what hell is going to be like. You don't want to be there. I can guarantee you, you won't want to be there. But you have to make that choice now. You might say, well, I'm young and I've got a long time ahead of me. Maybe you do. But again, maybe you don't. And if you don't, 
and uh, none of us knows if we're going to even be here tomorrow or this afternoon. We could be gone today. The rapture could take place or we could, some of, some of us are old enough that we could have a heart attack. And uh, you don't have to be old to have a heart attack, but some of us are older where that's a possibility. And so we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the day, the rest of the day holds today. So to think that, oh, I've got all kinds of time left to accept what he did for me there on the cross, that's a, that's a, a horrible thought, a thought from Satan. And should he come back or your life is taken, you're eternally lost in what the Bible calls hell. Hell wasn't made for man. It was made for the devil and his angels. But men choose to go there. I know people have said, God's not, God's not going to send people to hell. And they're absolutely right. He's not going to send people to hell. They're going to choose to go there because they want to do their own thing. So each one of us has to make a choice for or against or uh, nothing and just see what happens well you'll be sorry for that to reject again is eternal is an eternal mistake you know some people say well when you die you, you just you are uh, uh, annihilated and it's all over with how wrong can you get a lie from Satan eternity is waiting for each one of us out there you know and I think of of you folks with your granddaughter that lost some twins. I thank God that they're going to be there. There's no doubt in my mind that they will. Those people that are young enough that they can't choose for themselves, God's going to make provisions for them to be there. But you and I are old enough to, to know. You and I are old enough to, to decide yes or no. Those who do not accept God the Son's work on the cross will spend eternity in hell in unbelievable pain. We can't even begin to imagine. It, the, Bible calls it, the Bible calls it a lake of fire with brimstone. And, uh, well, we just can't imagine. So my prayer this morning for each of us here is that you've made the right choice. And if you haven't, you will. Again, because it's so easy for each one of us to make that choice. I can't make it for you. You can't make it for anybody else. You can't make it for your spouse or your children. I wish we could, but we can't. Again, it's a choice that each one of us has to make. And we're going to be held accountable for the choice that we do make. And that's what scripture says, what you'll be going through if you don't accept. Read through the book of Revelation. And there's a whole lot more in there that tell us what's going to happen. I just picked out some verses from there. And uh, you have a copy of the ones I read for you. And you can look at them again or read some other ones. But God is good. And I'm thankful that he made a way of escape for each one of us through what the Son did on the cross. And if we accept that, we're safe. If we don't accept it, we're not safe. We're going to spend, there's only two places to spend eternity. And we'll spend them in one place or the other, either heaven or hell. Again, the choice is up to us. We get to choose. So I encourage you to choose the right way. If you haven't, please, please, please choose. If you don't know how to choose, if you don't know how to be saved, let us know. I think there's a few of us here that could probably help you in that area of, what do I have to do to be saved? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. And while we talked this morning about some really if I can say it this way, scary things that are going to happen to those who refuse to accept the work that you did on the cross for us. Unbelievable misery and pain 
is in store for all those. So much so that they would ask the rocks, call out to the rocks to fall on them and hide them. But it's not going to work. I pray this morning if there's somebody in that category that has not accepted the work that you did for us on the cross, that they would do it today. And for, the, for those of us that have, like Jerry has been talking about in the Sunday school class, we live the kind of life that God wants us to live. And we can, don't have to do what Satan tells us to do, even though so often it seems like we do. And you'll hold us accountable for that. But help us to live the kind of life that you want for us to live. And I just thank you for all of that. In Jesus' name, amen.